What's up, adventurers? Got a really cool basic build for you today. We're going to be building a Baron Ironblood figure. Some of you guys familiar with my past posts on Facebook and early videos on this channel will be familiar with my Baron Ironblood figure that I did uh, when the jumpsuits first came out from Luca Porbenica's. I bought one from Cotswold Collectibles and decided to make my own Baron figure out of a formative Soldiers of the World head and a Cotswold body and some other retro fitted parts. I uh, really wasn't happy with the way it turned out, but I lived with it for a long time. Um, but today we're going to be redoing him, utilizing uh, some spare muscle body parts, uh, the cool, <clears throat> excuse me, head sculpt from Grunga Toys. Sydney over there is doing amazing work. And uh, Scott Greer uh, via Instagram, awesome 3D printing expert. Uh, I think, believe he lives down in Texas as well, where it seems to be all the experts live. Scott printed me off this awesome helmet. You've seen it in past Watson the Shops, but Scott is an amazing uh, 3D printer. He's actually currently working on an adapter for a uh, Cotswold or classic style body for some of his cool heads that he makes. But uh, we're going to be taking all this and creating a brand new Baron Iron Blood figure. So I'm pretty excited to share this with you today. So we'll pause the video, we'll come back, and we'll start talking about the details. All right, guys, welcome back. So here's the Baron Iron Blood figure I did several years ago. Like I mentioned in the intro video, I bought the jumpsuit off uh, Cotswold Collectibles. Uh, Felipe, Luca Bor, Benicas made these, and I thought, that, thought they were super dope. And at the time, a lot of people were making Baron Iron Blood customs. Uh, Felipe made a really awesome looking one, and uh, it kind of just took off from there. I didn't really have the body made. I didn't really have an idea at the time. I just kind of threw some stuff together. I used a Cotswold uh, basic body, uh, retrofitted some gung-ho grip hands to the body, black ones, and I uh, used a formative Soldiers of the World head. It just kind of sits on there. Uh, Lyle Kozak flocked it for me. Turned out pretty good actually Lyle did a great job flocking it but over time the, the gorilla glue kind of yellowed on that white hair so uh, it just really wasn't what I wanted so I put him back for a while and decided once I get a new idea to make one I'd uh, do him proper and put him on um, a photo story in the future that being said so we're going to scrap this body and then we're going to scrap the head and everything we're going to build a brand new uh physical platform or new body for this figure we will keep the jumpsuit and the Cotswold jack boots but we're going to go a different direction um, with a few other things so sayonara body so when we come back we'll talk about the muscle body build that we're going to be doing for this figure i think you're really going to like it. all right welcome back guys so <clears throat> let's talk about this uh, baron iron blood custom so first off as you guys know we're going to use the uh Lukopor Banika's uh, Baron Iron Blood suit. Uh, one of the OG ones that Cotswold sold back uh, a long time ago when he first started doing business with uh, Felipe at Lukopor Banika's before he moved on from the hobby. So I have this. I also have the uh, Grunga Toys cool Baron Iron Blood head. So we'll put those off to the side. Let's talk about this body first. So, we've got a muscle body here. It's in various stages of disrepair, as you can see right here. A lot of stuff going on with it. Uh, we've got the uh, hip area. I think the rubber could still be good there. I kind of tried to give it a test to see how how it holds up it's pretty loose so we might just scrap that and do an elastic restring of this guy like I've done on several other figures if you're familiar with some of my videos you know what I, how I do that so I won't go into a lot of detail on it uh, we've got uh, legs feet I had to uh, do some repair work to this leg here in particular I had to put a brand new piece in here to hold this broken portion together for the knee joints. 
but uh, it really won't matter because we're going to remove all this anyway. So we're going to break this guy all apart and uh, take out the rivets and whatnot. And uh, then I got the lower body restring kit. Ben at Promethean Rising made me a few of these again. Thank you, Ben. And then we're going to restring the lower body. As far as the upper body goes, a problem with all these muscle bodies that everybody knows about, and they're always usually missing their arms. So if you're familiar with Peter at the school review, you know that Peter's done some really cool retrofits using uh, the G3 Blue Box Toys muscle body arms onto the uh, G.I. Joe muscle body torsos. But those things are getting harder to find, and they're actually pretty expensive to just tear them apart. So I actually got an idea one day when I was perusing through eBay. I found some formative soldiers of the world arms. So as you can see here with this one, we'll talk about this in some, de in some depth a little later, but it definitely is not compatible with the shoulder here. However, I figured out a cool retrofit using a little bit of styrene and some screws. So I actually have made a retrofit version of this arm. Excuse me for a second. We'll pop this torso together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see that it works great. Uh, the flush tone blends in relatively well, not perfect, but it's a nice muscle body arm that is going to go on this figure. So this is what I'm, this is the direction I'm going to go with for Baron Iron Blood's arms is using this uh, method that I'm going to come up with. Um, so we'll talk about that here in a minute too, how we're going to do that. So this is one that's already finished um, and I'll show you how we go about making this retrofit. So that's the plan. We'll go ahead and get the uh, lower body strung first. You know how I do this. I won't... Um, go into much detail. I will tell you that I'm going to break all this apart, soak it in Tide Free and Clear, uh, brush it all up, take off all the goo on this leg, and cut all the feet out, get the uh, rivets out, and then we'll get to work using Ben's kit. And then we'll come back and talk about the arms. So stay tuned. All right, guys, let's talk about how we're going to do the arms for this Baron Iron Blood custom. So, like I mentioned in the intro video, uh, I've Really excited and inspired by what Peter from the school review has done utilizing the uh, Blue Box Toys G3 muscle body arms as a supplement for the original muscle body arms. In fact, those type of arms are actually a superior to the old muscle body arms if you're going for a more of a poseable figure. Uh, those G3 arms are highly poseable and they're really, really good. They're also a little bit uh, shaky when it comes to being able to be broken at the swivel arm portion. I got an idea one day when I was looking at the formative soldiers of the world arms and I wondered if there was a way to take those arms and retrofit them to the muscle body. These arms are actually very sturdy and uh, put together very very well. Uh, I acquired a broken formative soldiers of the world figure. I repaired him and uh, began the process of trying to figure out how to retrofit these to the muscle body. And what I came up with was basically taking the peg, the old arm peg, which is not compatible with the muscle body, and breaking it off, taking a small drill bit, using a mandrel drill, a small brass screw, and then pinning that, if you will, and then getting some eighth inch styrene rod, and then screwing that into the broken portion. And then also taking a piece of quarter inch styrene rod and drilling an eighth inch hole in the center of it and then sliding it over the portion of the eighth inch rod that's attached to the arm. And then getting it to where it needs to be to make a tight fit within the socket and then just basically melting the back end of it so it won't come out. So you can see what I've done here. I know it's maybe difficult how I explained it, but you can see, let me grab a razor knife here, try to focus this as best I can. You can see I've 
attach that rod, eighth inch rod, into the joint here with that screw, glued it, screwed it, and then I slid the quarter inch portion over it. It's about an eighth inch wide. And then I drilled the hole and then melted the back end. So you can take it, put it right in here. It fits in that slot and then boom, works perfectly. Um, I was inspired by the way the G3 bodies not, uh, shoulder attached. So I tried to uh, copy that as best as I could and it works out really, really well. Now, I haven't tried this, but a guy could take a Dremel and you could shave out some of this portion here, I would imagine. I don't know how much you'd have to shave out. But you could shave out enough to where this might slide in here, but I don't think that's going to work. You'd have to be really, really precise on how you did it. So I think it's easier to, to just cut this whole portion off and do what I did. So that's how I do the arms. Um, I'll come back after I start doing this one here and show you basically what it looks like in a step-by-step -step process. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut this off and we'll shave it down as, as flush as we can with a Dremel. Then take this bit, drill a hole in, fasten this screw, cut the screw off, drill another hole on the end of this, marry those two pieces together, and then I'll drill out an eighth inch hole in this, cut about an eighth inch thick piece of that off, slide it over there, while it's in the, slide this portion over it while it's in the socket and get it nice and tight. And then put some styrene glue around it to hold it in place, then melt it back into this so it won't slide off. I hope I explained that well, but that's, that's my process for how I'm going to do these arms. Secondly, painting the arms, uh, or painting the hands. So Baron Iron Blood has uh, black gloved hands I think in most of the things I've seen so I know these are rubber hands or a flexible material I'm assuming it's kind of like a rubberized material and you know it's hard to paint those with um, acrylics and keep the paint on there and it's also impossible to use an oil-based paint because it'll be sticky so this is what I use on this which works absolutely great hold on a second VHT vinyl dye. Vinyl dye works great on rubberized hands. Um, you can get it in a lot of colors. It bonds great and it stays on and it's very, very durable. So I've been using this on a lot of stuff lately and it works awesome. So it's a vinyl dye. What I do with the pegs here is I just take a tiny little brush and put lotion or Vaseline on the portion here. And then paint the hands and then I just wipe off the paint which won't bond to the lotion. So that's how you keep that that way. It's hard to get it to, the paint to bond to these because these are a high friction area. So um, the paint doesn't really want to stay on there. Even though this vinyl dye bonds really well, it doesn't want to stay on those grommets. So that's what we're going to do with this guy. So we'll come back. I'll do a step-by-step -step, uh, show you how we're doing this. And then obviously I just talked about the vinyl dye. I'm really not going to show you guys how to do that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So we'll be back in a bit. What's up, guys? Okay, so the next step on this arm retrofit, you can see I've cut off that tab or grommet or whatever you want to call it that attaches to the inner body of the formative soldier's torso. And I've taken a small, uh, let me grab it here. Take a small drill bit, drilled into that center point, shaved everything off with a Dremel too, by the way. Then I just have these really small brass screws. And what I'll do is I'll just screw that in there a certain depth and cut it off with a set of wire cutters, file off the end. And then I'll drill a opposite hole on this eighth inch styrene. And then I'll just screw it and glue it there. And then we'll leave off about, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch maybe. And then we'll put it in the torso. And I'll have the other piece. Let me grab it real quick. Oh, 
I'll use this quarter inch styrene rod. I'll drill out the eighth inch hole and cut about an eighth of an inch thickness piece off with my uh, miter box, hobby miter box. And then we'll slide that over this portion, which is already attached to the shoulder. So we'll get an idea of how this needs to be positioned. And then we'll put some styrene plastic weld on it and uh, permanently fasten it with some uh, melt. So anyways, we'll come back and we'll have the styrene rod attached to the shoulder. All right, guys, welcome back. So you can see the arm is all finished up. Got the uh, piece all trimmed up, put on the arm here. Works out well. So pretty easy to do. Like I told you, it's just a matter of doing some drilling and, and some adjusting and then melting the back end. Um, so everything's kosher with this arm. So both arms are done now. So next step is going to be to go ahead and assemble the whole body and uh, get this figure rolling out and try to get this guy all wrapped up. What's up, guys? So welcome back. Let's talk about this helmet. So this helmet was made for me by the ultra-talented Scott Greer down in Texas. Scott's a very talented 3D uh, print master. There's a lot of guys in Texas who seem to be 3D print masters. Him and Jim Egner and probably several other people. Um, he made me this helmet. Scott's really cool. He's got a great uh, Instagram to follow. He's a great customizer. He does a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're watching this, Scott, thank you very much. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, if you're on Instagram and you're a big collector of G.I. Joe type stuff or Mego stuff, definitely give Scott a follow. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the description. But Scott made me this helmet, which is super cool. And uh, it's going to be my Baron Iron Blood helmet. Um, what my plan is to do is I grab these reproduction foam inserts for the G.I. Joe space helmet off of eBay. I've bought these before for helmets. And my goal is to take these and then glue them inside the helmet like so. And provide a little bit of a padding for Baron Iron Blood's helmet. Now what I'm not sure about yet, I might have to adjust this is these might not be thick enough for what I want to do. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably just put a piece of Gorilla Tape on either side and attach it in there and see if they're going to work. If not, we'll go back to the drawing board and figure something out. So um, the only other thing I could do is to get some foam off of something I have already and then cut my own foam inserts for uh, the inside of this and just put these back for another project in case I'm restoring a helmet or something. So we're gonna paint this as well. So I've already sanded a lot of the helmet to make it look about the way I want it to. It's got a few imperfections because I think he just 3D printed this, like this is the first one he did. He upsized or upscaled a, a 1 18th Baron Ironblood helmet. So. I love the way this looks because it's going to look battle damaged. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint it with that VHT vinyl dye that I mentioned in the arm tutorial. Um, it's a really cool finish, so I won't prime it. I'll just go ahead and uh, wash this with Tide Free and Clear to get any of the imperfections out of it, let it dry, and then spray paint that helmet a few times with that vinyl dye, and it'll give it a nice finish. So that's the plan on this helmet. And we'll figure out the padding at a later date. We'll go ahead and get the helmet painted. And then when we get the uh, assembled Baron Ironblood figure, we'll take the helmet and put it on there and then see what we need to do to get it to perform the way I want it to. All right, welcome back, guys. So let's talk about the body. This is a, a muscle body like a hodgepodge of parts that I had. Um, the first left upper thigh portion was broken. 
I had to repair it uh, to get this peg back on, which is fine. I think it's going to work well when I get it all done. Um, we'll get it all cleaned up. We've got to go ahead and pop this one apart and then um, take out the guts of this. We won't really need them. And then we need to cut this leg off as well. I, a guy could, if you wanted to, you could leave this leg together and it could be uh, reused. But I want to be consistent with my repair. So I'm going to cut all this out and then use Ben Menenberg's lower body repair kit. We're going to use the whole kit this time because these hips are kind of shot. So we're not going to use the rubber. We're going to go ahead and uh, restring it with elastic and uh, make it all tight. The foot on this one needs to have the rivet removed. It's proven to be a little bit difficult because it spins. So I got to get a new set of pliers to cut that off. The last set I had, I tried to cut one of these rivets and snapped it, uh, snapped the pliers. So they're all made in China and pretty cheap. And then this leg here has a lot of uh, residue on it from uh, some masking tape that was put on it. So we need to get some goo going and uh, remove that as well and get all these parts cleaned up and get them ready to do the lower body restring kit on. You guys have probably seen my lower body restring videos. Uh, if you haven't, I'll post a link to all those. They're on my restoration um, Ho oh, playlist on my uh, YouTube channel, so you can you can find several different versions of my muscle body restrings. I also went ahead and uh, cast a neck post, and I'll attach it as well. Um, so we'll have it done. I'll just drill a couple holes in the top here and thread some thin elastic through, and uh, tie it really tight, and that'll hold the neck post in place in order to put that uh, Grungatoy's bear and iron blood head on. So. When we come back, we'll have this uh, hopefully all cleaned up and we'll have it assembled. And we'll have uh, the, the bear and iron blood body ready to put together along with those arms that we talked about earlier. Hey guys, welcome back. So we've got the body parts all soaking in the tide free and clear. We've got the uh, hip portions here separate that we'll be using, reusing actually. So we'll go ahead and get these all scrubbed up and cleaned up, rinsed off, laid out to dry. And then we'll come back and we'll start working on the uh, the lower body restring of this guy. It's going to be really simple and easy. Like I mentioned previous times, I got a lot of different content on my channel about how to do it. So I won't go into it very, very in depth. All right, welcome back, guys. So <clears throat> let's talk about the body here. Like I mentioned previously, there's plenty of good content um, as far as how I do my muscle body lower restrings, but we'll just go over a few things. So I'm going to use this uh, elastic, it's kind of like elastic paracord. You can get it at any Hobby Lobby or probably Joanne Fabrics. It's just an elastic um, cord. And we're also going to use this really fine elastic cord to do the neck as well. So we'll put those off to the side. I do have the lower body restring kit from Ben at Prometheum Rising here. Uh, I do have these pegs left over from the very first kit that he made me. For, the, for, the, you, ugh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, I came up with a, a lower body restring kit, kit a while back. Um, I used some old leftover parts from a muscle body lower that I glued together with some broken vintage pegs. Because uh, I figured out that the pegs actually work in the uh, um, lower leg. So I glued some stuff together, made some molds and castings, and it worked really well. And I did a video of that. And Ben reached out to me, and he was doing a muscle body, and he wanted to uh, restring the lower. So I sent him a kit, basically. And from my kit, he perfected it and created his own kit. Now, he doesn't have these available on his... Uh, Shapeways page, but I'll reach out to him after this video and and see if he would be interested in throwing those on Shapeways. I think the only issue would be for you guys out there who are picky. Uh, sometimes you have to do a little sanding to get these to work exactly the way you want them to, which is common with any type of replacement type part. Nothing fits perfectly, and I know some guys out there 
can be a little uh, Karen-ish, if, if you will, when it comes to buying stuff and um, using replacement parts. They get a little, they get a little grumpy if things don't work exactly the way they think they ought to work. So this is a great kit. I, I highly suggest um, Ben puts this on his Shapeways and uh, it's great for doing lower body reef strings. Now, as far as the elastic goes, um, I've had some guys reach out to me about the, uh, the crimp that I use for the, um, the loop that goes over the portion here. I actually went and bought some new ones. Um, these are 18 to 10 crimp sleeves. You can get them in the electrical department at any hardware store. So that's what I use, and I just kind of mash them in a little bit and then work that elastic through. You'll see when I get the lower body portion done. You can get a bigger size too. I have not used this one yet, but I might. I also bought a set of these uh, ring terminals. Now, a thing that you can do with these if you want to make your own elastic for your neck is you can pull the plastic off the ring terminal and then it just pops open. Then I thread that paracord, elastic paracord through there and then crimp this. So this will be what I pull through my elastic, similar to the Cotswold muscle body restring kits you can buy. I casted my own lower neck or uh, neck post for the head. So I'll uh, modify it. I'll shave off a little bit, drill out a small portion in here. So the uh, crimped area can sit in there when I pull the elastic up through there. You guys who have done muscle body restrings know what I'm talking about. So that's what's going on with this. These are all the materials I use. You can get, obviously, like I said, these in the electrical supply store, the elastic at uh, Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics, and these are in the automotive department. So that's what's going on right now. We've got everything ready to go. Um, We've got to do some dry fitting of all these parts to get them. So you'll have to sand this insert here a little bit to get it to go inside the uh, ankle here. Like I said, you're going to have to do some, if, if you ever bought these off Ben, you, you'll have to do some working to get them to fit properly. And he, he knows that. I mean, he messaged me when he first sent these about that too. So um, that's basically what you have to do with a lot of stuff. That's why I love Ben's parts because... A, they're flush tone, and they're really, really cool, and they work really, really well. And Ben's a really cool dude. Uh, I follow him on Instagram, and he is uh, he's one of the coolest 3D printer guys out there. He does a lot of really dope stuff. So uh, I'll put a, a link to Promethium Rise and his 3D blog page on here as well. So we'll go ahead and pause the video. We'll come back. Um, this should be all put together. And I'll show you how some of the different parts and components have worked out. All right, welcome back, guys. So here is the lower all done. You can see I've uh, done the crimp on the sleeve there under the uh, hip portion. And I've got these two pieces crimped. What I use for the crimp on these uh, leg joints, I have some metal brass tubing that you get at Hobby Lobby. I just cut it with a hobby cutter. And then I take a pair of uh, crimping pliers and then crimp it to make it uh, nice and tight there so it holds. So it's nice and tight, ready to go. So I've got the arm painted and ready to go as well. I got it masked off so both arms match now. So we'll go ahead and get this upper body assembled and come back. All right, guys, welcome back. So we've got the uh, body glued and drying. You can see here, I got the elastic pulled up. There's the piece of pipe that I talked about that I'll crimp. This looks real similar to the Cotswold muscle body restring kit. So we'll go ahead and let this dry, then we'll come back and we'll pull this elastic tight, crimp this portion, and then we'll show you what the rest of this uh, upper body looks like. Then we'll talk about assembling the legs. We're almost to the end of this. All right, guys, welcome back. So here's the body completely done and assembled. You can see the arms are on. Uh, I've done the ankles and the feet, and everything turned out pretty well. It's kind of a Franken body because I had to do some repair work on this old beat-up muscle body, but it turned out great. So the next step is to go ahead and put on 
Baron Iron Blood's dope head sculpt from Grunga Toys. Assemble the body complete, and then we'll put the Baron Iron Blood jumpsuit on and come back and finish this thing up with his helmet. All right, welcome back, guys. So here he is, the completed Baron Iron Blood figure. I wanted to do this gun that uh, James Peacock sent me, <clears throat> but sadly. The handle and the pistol grip is a little too small for these formative hands, so we'll figure out something else to use for it. It's a really cool gun, so I'll figure something out. You can see that the uh, helmet's complete with the vinyl die. Turns out great. Fits perfect on his head. Shows his eyes really well. Uh, I love the way this helmet turned out, too. We'll go ahead and take the helmet off. And here is our completed Baron Ironblood figure. I really love the way this guy turned out, to be honest. Couldn't have been a better custom for me. Everything went smooth. I didn't have any issues or problems. He fits the suit really well. I did notice that, I don't know how this happened, but I've got a tiny little blemish hole right here in the suit, probably from storage or something. But uh, what a great figure. I really love this guy. He's going to be a great villain, and uh, he's going to be a cool addition to my villain's line. So my redo of Baron Ironblood is all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this custom. It's really easy to do if you just take the time and have the right parts and the right materials, and anybody can do it. And I highly suggest you guys check out Sydney at Grunga Toys, various items on Cotswold Collectibles, namely this Baron Iron Blood head sculpt. It's great. It's one of the coolest head sculpts, I think, out there. So, yeah, that's about it, guys. This wraps up our basic builds, Baron Iron Blood. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe to the page. Share these videos. Leave a comment. I know a lot of you guys out there have made your own Baron Iron Blood figure, and I can't wait to see what you guys think of mine. And until next time, guys, keep living the adventure and cheers.